Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube. Welcome to Jibber Jabber. I am your host, as always, Skajaramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift. With me today, we have a not quite as full a house as I would like, but it's still relatively full, all things considered. First up, we have Darkness, one of my patrons. Hey, everybody, again, half dead here. Yeah, there's a story behind that, which I'll be telling as the first main topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, we have Hades Shadow 92, who is sadly missing people poking in his face. Skajarma is the biggest utter, utter bastard that ever lived. You sure that honor doesn't go to Tom, who is also here rounding out the British corner with darkness? I've never felt so continuously defeated. Scratch that, nearly dead. Hmm. Next up, standing in the background and staring into your soul, we have Paladin. Stairs. <laughs> Stairs. That's and... on his voice, we know it now. Yeah, no, I refuse to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, if I can find him in this damn list of people, we have <laughs> Soviet Starfish, who's staring in disappointment at Paladin. Then you mean Patrick Starfish. <laughs> Shut up. I, I figured I'd give him a break for the day. <laughs> you you oh, know, you. Well, well, life, it, Tom. life shows you a lot of things. Like one minute you're planning to go to a convention, the next minute, even though you're an adult, your family yells at you, and now you can't. It, fun, <laughs> fun times all around. Oh, so you're not going to Everfree? Uh, apparently, even though I am a legal adult and responsible for my own finances, I have been told that I am not allowed to go. Then, even though I have plenty of time to budget. Huh. So, well, fuck me, I guess. Go anyway. You're an adult, man. <laughs> because if I go, I am going to hear nothing but endless bitching and moaning from my family about me going, even though I was told not to go. Sounds like that's what you're getting anyway, oh. but... Eh. What's the difference? Yeah. Eh. I have endless bitching from my family, but you don't see me crying about it. <laughs> yeah, well, you fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no hmm. thanks. So, uh, outside of that, how is everyone's week? I well, am tired. pain all over, both in body and in soul. Hmm. It was going great until about a few hours ago. And what the <laughs> fuck just happened? <laughs> you mean like an hour ago, because that's when all the shit hit the fan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I bet the audience is curious as to the context, so... So am I. Let me, Tell let, us the let, epic fail of our success. Yeah, let me finish swallowing down these cough drops really quick. My throat's kind of fucked up, so... Oh, that's... Ain't it always? Yeah, he was too busy laughing at our... Our pain. I was laughing and voice acting. Also, did you notice that I made the guy sound like Zigbar? Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck is Zigbar? Kingdom Hearts. Oh, no, 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 Wait, Star Wars. That's right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. No, whoa, Zigbar's from whoa, Kingdom, Hearts. Whoa. Kingdom Hearts. Now then. Oh. Tom, Hearts. that just makes me. That just makes me hate him even more. What? Well, you well, that's I the pick? point. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, Final Fantasy D6 recap. I know we are actually playing back to back. Each week for a change. I have no hope that this will last, uh, but here's the hope. I, I miss I miss the nice birthday thing. Can we go back to that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Anyways. I wasn't even there for it. Daddy. Daddy, 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 Daddy. Excuse me, I'm trying to give a recap. <laughs> you can save your you. you can save your saltiness <laughs> until after I've recapped it and you can rage at me for ten minutes and eat up some oh, wow. time. Wow. Anyway, so uh, just to recap everyone who actually gives a damn about this uh, particular segment on Jibber Jabber, uh, the last session of FFD6 that me and the others played was not considered canon. It was a separate session, completely divorced from everything happening, that served primarily as just a means of celebrating Lumina's birthday, which we were a day late on, but, you know, there we go. This session actually continues the story, and it opens up with the party waking up and heading to... Uh, the palace of Murasu, the city that everyone's kind of sequestered away in, to speak with the local lord, Laren Kane, and see if he has any more work for them. There, they learn that thanks to a sample that had been brought to everyone before, to, uh, excuse me, the court white mage and his apprentice, uh, Tamuman and Mika Solwyn, respectively, 
Due to their tireless efforts, especially from Mika, they were able to deduce that the plague is derived from uh, something deeply rooted in the world's lore referred to as Demi-Amber, a, uh, a sort of evil crystal that grows all over the world and creates evil and demons wherever it sprouts. Horrible substance, exceedingly dangerous, and can infect and corrupt the mortals. It's not frequent that it does that. Usually it infects and corrupts wild animals and conjures demons, but it can also do it to humans and the other mortal races. Not common, but it happens. Anyways, if that be the case, then there is a certain origin point of the plague in the city. So the party decided they needed to find some way of locating this thing that they are now referring to as the seat of the plague. In order to find it, they figured they would need to find the leader of the plague. And to find the leader of the plague, they'd need to find a regular cultist. So they ventured out from the city's safety, from the safe areas of the city, and were very quickly able to find a cultist. Uh, in retrospect, they've all come to realize suspiciously quickly. Anyways, uh, they give chase when he goes to run, and eventually drag him back to the inn and tavern where they all met in the first place. And there's a bit of a back and forth with him. And after some almost torture, it didn't quite go to torture, it almost did, he fesses up and tells them that their leader <laughs> tends to... Now, I feel it's po important to clarify. He didn't actually say there was a meeting happening. He just said that was a common meeting spot. You all misinterpreted that. But anyways, um, he pointed out that there was a spot at an intersection deeper in the city where meetings were usually held between the leader of the cult and a bunch of his closer lieutenants and stuff. And he also revealed the name of the cultist leader, Saron Jun Leal. An interesting name that I had right. fun coming up with. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so with that knowledge firmly grasped, the party decided to go and see what they could see, see what they could find, and maybe find Saron himself. And when they arrived and did some scouting, they discovered Saron and a collection of cultist archers on the roof, seemingly waiting for something to happen. After spying on them for many, many minutes and watching them grow steadily more uh, impatient, Neothil assembled the others, and they came up with a really good plan that could have actually gotten them a noticeably large advantage in the, com in the coming conflict, which would involve Alistair being a distraction and faking wanting to join the cult, Neothil sneaking around to provide aerial support from a rooftop with a crossbow, a rocket remaining just a little behind to jump back in if in the event that shit went to hell to help fight the cultist leader, and Thanatos sneaking off to try and get behind the leader so that they could have him surrounded. The problem is this is what... And, and this is a really good plan, mind you. I, I was actually kind of in my head trying to figure out how the hell I was going to make this work. Because mm -hmm. I was not anticipating them having that good a plan, or rather, I was, I was prepared for the possibility of them having a good plan. I just didn't think that would be it. Mm -hmm. Every plan is good until the first shot is fired. Or in this case, the two ones are rolled. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> random number generator, fake dice, bollocks. Yeah, well, anyway, so the party went on forwards to try and do the thing, uh, but things very quickly fell apart because Neothel and Thanatos both rolled critical fails on their stealth checks. So... We, I put a bit of a delay on that just so we could have some opening interactions with this plot arc's main villain. And so the group uh, kind of all, all come forward. Alistair starts talking to Saran, pretending he wants to join up. He's not rolling particularly well on his acting checks, but he's rolling high enough to keep Saran's attention. Then Neothel and Thanatos' shitty rolls come into effect. Neothel falls off the roof because she slipped on some moss, and Thanatos just can't sneak for shit in his heavy armor. And, they're, just, and you know, they're soon sort of gathered up in the middle of this intersection, the sort of square-like area, talking to Saran. Rocket's still hanging back. And after a bit more back and forth, peace talks break down, as it were, and a boss battle begins, in which it is revealed that Saran had eight archers ready and waiting to go, one of which had access to poison arrows. Ooh. Dang. Yeah, so where the hell were those archers hiding? On the roofs. On the other sides of the slopes where you couldn't see like... them. <sighs> ah. Not our finest moment. Tactic. Hmm. Anyways, so, I mean, you noticed a few of them before shit hit the fan. 
two of them. Why did I have four of them on me? Because you ha you chose your position poorly. <laughs> uh, the idea with their positions was to cover the street exits. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, so, uh, the boss battle broke out, and after a, a few initial exchanges, the party quickly realized they were hopelessly outmatched and outnumbered on basically every front. There was no way they were going to win this as they were. So they turned tail to start trying to run, but the enemy just ha kind of had them surrounded and cornered, and, and there was a very high escape check that they needed to make. Fortunately, to get out of there. I have an ability for running away. Yeah, fully. I got adds, that when leveling up. Yeah, it adds an additional bonus to running away. So the party made every effort to flee. Uh, but it didn't quite work out. <laughs> No, it coming. really did Another crit fail. Yep, they kept rolling, they kept rolling, but the enemy just kept cutting them off. Or they kept not being able to do enough because nice. they were being hindered from hits. Thanatos was being pelted by like four arrows every round and was only thanks to Alistair's healing spells that he was able to stay up as long as he did. Mm. Um, and eventually, Saran actually made use of a thunder spell on Rocket after she jumped back down into the street and almost one-shotted her. Before that, it was the darkness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, dark. Yeah. And, and everyone took damage, f except for Rocket, from shadow attacks. Because that's except a, me. Yeah, you got It appears the forces of darkness have spied against me. Treachery! <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. So. So Rocket is down to eight hit points, and everyone else is well under half because shadow damage deals 50% additional damage to most of the party. Um, so eventually the party is, so, uh, Neothil and Alistair get onto Rocket's back and just in a blind, damn near feral panic, she runs. She's able to roll high enough on her escape check to get everyone else out of there while Thanatos has to roll on his own because he wasn't in the right spot to get onto her back. He was too far away and there was a building dividing them. So he I still got out. Yeah, but he still managed to get With out. A dead on twelve. I even gave him a little epic moment as sort of like a consolation prize for their escape after getting their asses so thoroughly kicked. He cut <sighs> down a shit ton of arrows. Yeah, it was like, such a good it. plan. Yeah, five archers shot at him all at once, and he cut their arrows out of the air all at once before keeping going and breaking line of sight and getting away. Um, mm. let's see here. Following that, the party uh. Just ran back to the safe parts of the city, didn't stop for anything, just heading straight for the palace. They busted into the front doors and Rocket, just being close to on death's door, just collapsed, as did everyone else. They hit the ground, the adrenaline wore off, and they all passed out. And that was where that session ended. Scratch it. I you... know what he is. He's the splint. He is the shredder of the of our story. This is like <laughs> what happened when the team Even if you... the shredder for the first time. Get royally screwed over. <laughs> Even if you didn't have that uh, last pass out at the end, there, I was going to have Nia just not being able to get up. Like she still has like half an hour sticking out of her gut, even though she snapped the shaft. Yeah. Uh, so all of us were pretty much not okay. I was like, well below my half health. I got hit from twenty. In hits Rocket, pretty much just shut down. You two are suffering from an arrow from like arrows and shadow stuff, and I. Just no, you suffer the arrows the most. You're a hedgehog, Thanatos. Only... <laughs> yes, I am. Although I mean... that one, although a little bit of shadow attack did kind of. Right now, I'm in. Yeah. We got hit by the shadow with a shadowy pain with a half an arrow sticking out of my gut. Yeah, Tam is gonna have a field day putting us back together. Yeah. Well, it it does make it worth it if um. Me wakes up and the first thing she sees is Mika's face. This fellow is a heartless, ruthless bastard. I bet she <laughs> had a cree for victory for Dr. Attack. And then he least... just spites her with lightning. No. But no, guys, at least we know what we're up against. Mm. As, as I was saying, it make it somewhat make me feel somewhat better if like, she wakes up the first thing she sees is Mika's face because she's not so not hard on the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Didn't you learn your lesson the last time? Oh, what lesson? <laughs> <laughs> All I know is Alasai is going to be pretty pissed when I'm, when I'm doing it again. 
Oh. Yeah, I mean, Lee got rejected doesn't mean that she won't stare every now and then. Yep. Oh, cleavage. <laughs> I, think, oh. I think Mika's more of a Twilight than a Misty. I mean, they're both book horses. Yeah. Well, true. Is Mika Misty? That's up to Tom to uh, determine for himself, man. Hmm. If he's right or wrong, he'll figure it out eventually. It's up to him who he tries to pursue. Mm. <laughs> Lol. With all that said... With that all that all? said, Skijarama is a bastard, and we're so, going to have a hell of a time. I'm just Dude, getting is, is started. Any... Shut up, Senate. Is there anything left we want to talk about on that, or shall I go from one complete boss battle fuck-up to another complete boss battle fuck-up? If you Bad want to, I, By I all just means. hope I get enough time to cheer us up with a little story of my own, so well, go ahead. Well, first of all, um, Paladin, Soviet, do you have anything to add to this? You weren't there, but do you have any commentary? You know, this just reminds me of the great lessons of life, uh, where everything is going to plan until some fucker drops a frag grenade in the middle of your well-timed assault behind enemy lines, and then it just all goes to shit. <laughs> yeah, that goes to plan until three. your heart shatters by those two ones on the screen. <laughs> Make eyes. <laughs> grenade! You know, you know, you, so so you know, you know that actually makes me think. Um, we can discuss this just... more in depth after Jibber Jabber, but it just makes me think. There's a there's a video game that I play sometimes called Tabletop Simulator. That's good for tabletop role playing games. Mm. Maybe someday we can make the shift if you guys are feeling up to that. Oh, oh definitely. We can discuss, especially since it actually has physics based dice rolling. Everything is physics based. We can discuss it more after Jibber Jabber. Just a thought to keep. In yeah. Mind. Uh, yeah, because I mean, if you guys more safe, if using like actual dice, dice, at least at least at least with guys. the physical dice, there's some level of uh, uh, like some level of physical uh, skill to it, rather than a random number generator. I need to, I need to ask my friend how to get it. the other dice for for what you call it, the wall twenty, because apparently they don't use it because they find it to be a bit lackluster now and then. It doesn't give out. They have it keeps doing repeats of bad walls. So they use a different dice for it. I need to find out what it is, though. Mm. But apparently everyone can see it. Everyone can use it. No problem. Mm. Yeah, well. For now, it's just... We'll keep it on the table. But, uh... Yeah. Ow. This is a heads ow. up. Uh, I dark, swear to God. Darkness's microphone keeps making weird sounds. We had to deal with that all throughout FFD6, so... Yeah, I don't know what's up with it today. I'm very sorry. I just can't find the problem. Yeah. I checked every plug socket. It's weird. So, but yeah, with that campaign, I can see that that final fight probably being a meant to lose battle in the game, and also that episode is just going to be called "Well dot 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 space fun." <laughs> <laughs> well, we're fucked. But anyway, Tom, do you want to? At least I did get a nice little. Story? Interrogation scene. Yeah. That was fun. And, and I, I'm at least proud of how the fight started because he like said, "So what do you? So what do you say? Do you join us or not?" I just raised the crossbar and shot his buddy in the gut. <laughs> I took a gamble. I threw my fucking own staff, my only melee weapon and magic weapon, right between us. That's fine. Between I kicked it back to you. Guy. Yeah, which is good. I'm so glad you did do that because I probably guess if I take a one up to it, somebody's gonna hit me back. At least that one fuck will remember me. Maybe he'll bleed out from complications or something. But anyway, you want to do your story? Yeah, so let's yes, move on. I have two. Topic I have two. A... The Tom's D&D and Lop stories. I'm going to start with the Lop story, then go to the D&D one, because Lop story is very thematic for what we've been talking about. Well, the D&D story is much more upbeat and jovial. Yeah. Um, so, this weekend, starting Friday... I went camping, specifically to do LARP. We've talked about this in the past, I do believe, a very long time ago, since it last happened in September. So, I was, I was there for, for three days, more or less, Friday, Saturday, and most of today, until like an hour before we started FFD6. So, one, from one fire to another. Uh, my character, for those who probably don't remember, is a member of this world's church. I'm a church guard, which means that whenever things involving the gods are around, my organization is usually in it. 
I arrive on Friday just around the time it starts, pretty much almost as soon as timing has started. Actually, was it that? Oh, I'm trying to remember the... Yeah, pretty much as soon as timing has started, like, a shrine in our church, quote unquote, which is just a tent, though we didn't even have that this time, um, that contains, like, various banners of the names of all 26 gods, one of them burns up, leaving only 25 left. This is simultaneously backed by earthquakes, lightning bolts that hit everyone, and down, pretty much immediately down everyone in metal armor, and, the, like, blood rain. Basically, one of the gods has just died. Yikes. Specifically, the god of the harvest, like the lady of the harvest, so we're now in a famine as well. Oh boy. Dang. So pretty much, well, so pretty much the uh, the church is instantly in complete fucking red alert panic mode because along with all this, all of our magical artifacts just ceased working, like um, spell books, everything gone. So we're in Deathcon fucking one. The vegan, which are like Vikings, are screaming Ragnarok. It's uh, uh, as they do. Yes, blaming Loki, who is in the in our church, is called Logan. His banner is the only one that's all like more colored and white and has three kisses at the bottom. Because of course it does. Uh, God of chaos. So we discover that the since the the gods are essentially at war with you know Lovecraft in horror and Cthulhu and all that. Yep, of course I do. Cthulhu Katagan. Basically, Cthulhu, ancient Katagan. old ones, that whole thing. They've been at war with them for a while. One of them has somehow, like, distracted a bunch of the gods, led them away from their uh, sanctum, got inside and murdered one of them. Like, the god of the harvest, which isn't the combat one. Obviously, they're of the harvest. Well, like, lay ground, like, the god of war, which I'm, my character is the specifically worshipping, was away. And then able to defend them. And on top of all that, this old one, this Eldritch Abomination, has a cult that's now attacked every single church simultaneously in all of Albion, the country. And one nearby, they're trying to summon that old one into the real world. Since the gods don't ever stop it, because they're just in a complete meltdown as well, over the loss of one of that number. So, Saturday comes about. We, the church, are being tasked to go to this church, other church, combat the cult, and stop them from summoning the old one. So at this point, like, most of the church is actually members of my university, LARP Society, with only a few exceptions. Like, the acting head of the church this time isn't, like, our actual church head wasn't in the event. Also not at the event were three of my friends from uni, who are all Templars, plus another one who's also a Templar of a different race. So we were four Templars down, which left a um, least experienced Templar, another of my friends from uni, as the acting head, even though he's only been to one event as the Templar before this one, and was very low level. And me, a simple church guard, as the only two fighters. Everyone else was a healer. Oh boy. Dang. So we realized, shit, we need more fighters. All right, acting head healer Un, please go over to the military guild who are pre preparing to repel like a morsel invasion of like a neighboring country to lend assistance. Grab a couple of their fighters, bring them back. She goes, we're waiting, we're preparing. She comes back with the entire military army. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they decide, oh, oh, an old one, this sounds more fun. Screw them. Screw uh, this, our allies. They can handle it themselves. Spoilers, they're dead now. Oh. And we lost it. <laughs> Bugger. We're going to go and fight these cultists instead. So we're like, okay. Um, so all the Vagan, the Vikings, the, uh, the Boars, like one of the most oldest and advanced military fighting units, everyone else, Warlocks, just the entire, everyone who ha has a sword has now turned up. So Dang. we're like, 
All right, we're feeling good about that. We shouldn't have felt good about it, as it turns out. Um, Because, God, they doomed us. So, we then get ready, we prepare. The church then leads the military towards where this church is. We go marching off into a portal, and that takes us there. One thing that should be noted as a side note, the church has a very tentative relationship with some of these other guilds and factions, particularly the Vegan. And the she, which like cat people, their leader Ramu. So they don't always listen to us, even when they should. This is going to come important later. Oh boy. So we go through the woods. I am assigned to our scribe, Raleigh, to protect her, while our Templar is assigned to protect some of the other healers, and plus we have a couple of like a vegan and a boar with us, also helping to do that. We're going through the woods, that's near the campsite. We're fighting through the, the, the monsters, the players who are monstering for us as the cultists. We make very good... It's all going very well. Like, we're absolutely slaughtering these cultists. Even when they start, like, becoming, like, super possessed by this old one, like, billowing smoke out their eyes, sombra style. Like, we're kicking their asses. Like, me and Raleigh head up to the front of the lines to start dragging people back to be healed at the back of the lines. I get in a few good fights and hits. At one point, one of the Vegan goes berserk and hits me in the back of an axe and downs me. Um, but luckily, I'm quickly healed up by Un, the he- our head healer. Mm-hmm. So aside from that little snafu, it's all fine. We get through fine. We manage to heal up those who go down. We break through. We get into the field, there's the church right at the end, with only a very few defenders. There's very few defenders left at this point. At this point, what we want to do is start casting Hallow around this place, and then cleansing the church of any influence of the old one before dealing with the cultists, because we can do that, so the old one cannot physically come through. So as we approach, like, we've told, like, the guy who's leading the military guild in this, like, head of the board's ace, like, the plan. He agrees, so he commands, he raises his hand and loudly, so everyone hears, and everyone does hear, commands all military guilds to hold position. Half of them do. The other half, led by Ramu, who I mentioned earlier, the head of the Shi, the cat people, all of the Vagan, as well as a troll called Yeti, who likes eating things and everything, All decide, fuck that, there's only a few, we'll go in now. So they charge straight into the church, as we're all just dumbfounded with this stupidity. Within seconds, they start fighting the cultists, Yeti immediately starts eating the cultists, (laughs) and all of this chaos all adds up to the old one immediately coming through and killing everyone inside. Immediately downs everyone. Jeez. Ramu... For example, like everyone's on their death count, which lasts five minutes. And all of us start rushing into action, because the cultists that are left now are running outside. The old ones are merging from the church. Which, even at, when it first does, we can't do much, because we're instantly all told to drop to the floor for one minute, screaming from the very sight of it, because it's an it's a eldritch abomination like Cthulhu. After that one minute, more of us have been murdered while on the ground. We get up, they, we get the healers into action, start trying to grab more people back to be healed up. It becomes a, like a losing fight very quickly, but several uh, our healers start trying to cast the halo around the church to try and force the old one back into the other realm. Mobile coists come charging out, attack some of the healers, so I'm then able to do rudimentary medical treatment to our own healers with some bandages up and provided by the scribe while waiting for some other help. And then we start hearing a new call by the, the ref who's playing the old one. Drain level one, which essentially means every player there takes one hit point of damage, then goes to drain level two, then level three, then level four. Bear in mind, I've been here a few times already, along with most other people. And all of our healers that are present are quite low level. 
so they can only mass heal for one. So, after the first drain comes about that downs me, I'm on the floor, along with a lot of other people at this point. The healers are still up, so they go around, they start healing people, we get back up, I start moving to help, drain level four again, I drop again, less than five seconds later. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm looking around on the floor, in the like, wet grass by the way, because it's been raining, and hailing, and as it, actually as we turned up to the church, it started hailing, very thematically. <laughs> I think that was an omen. <laughs> um, but yeah, like this eldritch abomination is just going around. One of my friends and and a fellow and a vegan called Torin in character goes up to it and tries punching it in the face. He just gets death cast on him instantly, and he drops. Jesus. But, uh, it's all going like. Over half of the party is down, and the party consists of like 80% of all play the entire player base that are present. So we realize we can't win. We're screwed. Like, we can't get the Hallow completed. We can't seal this place. We can't force it back. And if we can't force it back, it's just going to keep draining us every time we get up. So the call for retreat is sounded. We run away. I get healed again. I start running. Drain level four. I drop again. <laughs> like I'm not get, again. I'm not the only one. Keep dropping every time I try and run. I drop instantly because drain's being called every few seconds. The healers oh, that are left standing are trying to find to heal everyone around possible and try to get them to run as far as they can. Others, like some of the high level players who can resist drain, because very few have like very powerful magic resist. Are also trying to drag players out of the range of the drain. When I'm down for the last time, like one of the boars comes up to me, uses strength, just chucks me on his shoulder, not in real life, just because that's health and safety, but start over his shoulder, starts dragging me away. As we're reaching the edge of the infective zone, we hear drain again. He drops, but with his last action, he throws me over the line. So I'm no longer in, in the range of effect. At this point, most players have been dragged or ran out themselves, but there's just bodies everywhere of people dying. Oh, God. This is brutal. It's That's just a complete do. massacre. Jesus. Uh, and the aftermath wow. of this isn't the end, by the way. Um, oh, <laughs> something else happens later, back in camp. Um... But luckily, the healers all are up again. They're getting to work. I get healed up. And like, Riley gives me back those bandages, basically tells me to start stabilizing everyone I can. I get to work instantly, even though, like, every limb's hanging on by a thread. I'm on one and everything. My arm is fucked. It's not doing anything. Ugh. And I was wearing full armor as well. I had like, quite a lot of hit points. So, like, at one point... I after healing somebody I knew, I hear, like, Ace is standing over, like, his hand up, it signify out of character, counting down, 10, 9, 8. I noticed the guy he's standing over is about to die. Like, he's literally 10 seconds left on his death count. So I run over, I sprint, just hastily stop stabilizing, do it with 5 seconds left of 5 minutes from death. <laughs> like, permanent character death. <laughs> Bear in mind, on my, my last drop, I was 20 seconds off. Wow. That's the closest I've ever come. That's terrified me. <laughs> uh, Damn. So, yeah. Like, we teleport them all back to, like, Helmsford and the bar, since the bar has a ward over it where you can't attack or drink, but you also can't bleed out if you're down. So it's a good place to bring dying people. <coughs> so a very long healing process begins where we start healing up pretty much the entire population of Helmsford, as it's called, of our town. And then we start trying to take in what's happened. Turns out, well, pretty much everyone at some point dropped, and at one point, like, 80% of our party had also had dropped. But by through luck, like, healing magic, and everyone working their asses off to drag people out of the area, we managed to get everyone out, Two. <laughs> Two players were killed by the drain. Like, 
One of them was Ramu. You know, the person who led the charge inside was the first person in. Because he was just the first one to see it and get got completely torn to shreds by the old one. Luckily, he was fine since he has a magical artifact that allows him to reforge in the volcano, just slightly pissed off and wanting to hit things. So he was fine. The second character was one of the Vagan who got killed during the ensuing fight. He's gone. His character's dead permanently. Yikes. He had to make a new one from scratch. Jesus. Like, he, they couldn't get... He was being healed on, like, the last few seconds of his death count, but then the healer that was healing him got stabbed in the back and also downed. So he went over. One more casualty came from this fight when... Yeti, the guy that eats everything, since he'd been eating some of the cultists, the old one got influence on his mind. Oh god, no. It possessed him and he started attacking people. <laughs> Our Templar, Magnus, took his sword and, cho and chopped his head off. Jesus, alright. So Damn, man. His character was dead, Damn. but he's a troll, luckily, so he be regrown. <laughs> they literally cut off his arm, took it to the church, planted it, and he grew up and the next day he'd grown out again. He has no memory. He lost some of his abilities. He has no memory of his past life, but Yeti 2 is recording him is back. <laughs> All right. Wow. We have to teach him to speak again. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Uh, so we're licking our wounds. Like there's a Eldritch Bombation loose where we call like an NPC like, Demon Hunter Company, that's our uh, church guild leader had from a previous event that you call upon, go and go to the church and just kind of cordon it off to make sure it just can't leave a certain area so it can't just come back to hell and finish the job. So, yeah, we're, we're completely licking our root wounds. We're trying to heal, like, two, three people died, two of them will be coming back, one won't. Oh, dear. So, yeah, we sit in the church. We're trying to figure out what to do. We're trying to communicate with the Zoni, the gods, to try and figure out exactly how this all happened. Also, slightly pissed off with the military guilds because they rushed in like they did. Uh, and then, as this is happening, there's a goblin attack on the town. Goblins who are also under the control of the old one. Like, they have a insatiable hunger. So they come in and attack. Like, I'm in the church when this happens. So I see, like, some shouting chaos and the fighting breaking out. So me and the healers come out of the tent. Well, not tent. That's like a... Because we didn't have it. Just, like, flags marking where the tent should be. And we get to fighting. We get to healing. Our head healer, Un, has, like, a magic ring that... Compels it to heal enemies as well as friends. By gifts of, like, bonus heals. So that's, but that's so I'm I'm kind of charged initially to protecting her and trying to keep her from healing every single enemy she sees. Which uh, it was kind of funny because at one point I tried to go her back into the church so she couldn't see what was going on and won't be doing it. I got her to the door. She turns, sees a down goblin at the other end of the field, and sprints off after it. So I have to sprint after her, and I'm in full armor. So that's and it's gone. And the sun's come out at this point, so I'm freaking boiling and sweating and dying. Uh, mass, so this mass fight is going on. Every like the first few waves, no problem. We cut them down easy. We're back at full health by this point. Um, and then a wave of goblins comes in. I hit them, triple, triple, triple. No effect. Like they can't be hurt by anything but star metal, the rare metal in the system. Oh boy. So at this point, I'm just getting murdered over and over again, and I'm back to constantly being on my death count, along with a lot of other people. To the point where the healers start dragging bodies to the church, and the church was full of corpses. Like, there were dozens of people in there, just on the ground, bleeding out. that are only being protected and stopped from completely dying by the wards on the church, which are like the ones on the bar. Wow. Whoa. Uh, fortunately, those few people that did have star metal things were able to repel the goblins in the end. We even captured one, interrogated it. It's still in the, still in the cell. We left it in the church. And yeah, that's 
pretty much how that entire fucking system event went for the last couple of days. Wow. Damn. Like, we, we got our asses kicked massively. And that was, like, uh, over 30 minutes Next final battle yeah. against a separate enemy we're at war with. We take a lost four and they succeeded. But yeah, a god died, an old, old ancient one was released, and Seems we lost some players. The world once again. Nice. Yeah. So now we've got to try and, uh, like, the, that old one's contained, the demon has taken care of it, but there are three other churches that might soon be releasing more old ones, so we now got to try and stop that, because if that happens, oh, we're, no. we're all doomed. Jeez. There's nothing we can do. The gods will die. Well then, you got work to do. So you can see why I was had frustrated go from that to what happened in FFD6. <laughs> yeah, I can understand oh. that now. <laughs> and it was all oh. because the like Ramu and the other military people could not listen to orders to hold. Like if they had let us hallow it, it wouldn't have happened. None of it. Welcome to fantasy. Like it, <laughs> like, it was entirely the player base's fault. Uh, welcome to a fantasy setting. Anyways, you have a more lighthearted one? A more lighthearted yes, story? Do. Okay, let's hear that! Because <laughs> holy shit. Oh god. This is the story, of, particularly of a dwarf named Grendabold. We just call him Grendy. I, this is set in the world of Dragon Age. <coughs> uh, I am a human warrior. Who is experienced fighting Darkspawn? The other characters are Luvi and Antivan Rogue. Do you know anyone who plays Dragon Age? Do you know what Antivans are? I do yeah. not know what Antivans yes. are. They're, they're the people that like to like do the nasty a lot, essentially. Oh, they're sex people. Gotcha. Well, not entirely, but that's just a lot of their culture, their entire race of humans, but yeah. Okay. Then we got a dragon, a Talvasho Kronari, who is essentially um a heretic of the Canari people who can use magic. And Grendabold the Dwarf. So, we are a small army of people hired to get into a city, rescued a lord's son who's been captured while fighting the Canari, and get out. The Canari, for those who don't play Dragon Age, are worshipping like this fanatic religion called the Kuhn. Uh, that's the name Canari. Which Hold is up, like but a, it, remind me, are they the, like, really big creatures that have the, the horns, horns protrude? Yeah, yes, that's what I thought. My favorite race from Dragon Age. Yeah, they're very fanatic about it. Like, they, they will, like, you know how Sully like, and them are brainwashed like ponies for our town? Mm -hmm. They'll do that for people to, to get them to worship the Kuhn, and anything, anyone that resists will be murdered for the last. Like, they don't accept people that don't follow their religion. Mm-hmm. Which is why they're often at war with other people, because they're very expansionist and aggressive. Uh, so just like Christianity. Pretty much. Or just most well, religions that have... at least back in the... Here. The most extreme cases of religions, like Crusades or... Inquisition. Uh, like the, what, are they what, what do the Muslims call them? Uh, jihads. That, that's what they refer to them as. Yeah. Entire nation of like that kind of mindset. Like Yes. We are the one true religion. If you don't join us, you will die, kind of thing. So again, so, just like every major religion, except for a handful of them, at some point. Only in only in the most extreme cases. Just exactly. Out. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we know he's not dead. So we think he's about to be shipped off as a slave or been trying to be indoctrinated. So we've been hired by this guy's father, who's leading us as an army of mercenaries to go and get him back and attack this Canary city. So, all we had to do was basically attack it, get the guy, get out. We don't need to destroy it. We didn't intend to destroy it. It was just a quick smash and grab. This is the story of how the, our army got completely decimated, and yet a small group, our party, also burned that city to the ground. <laughs> you have my well, attention. It started in our war camp near the city. It's me, Luvi, and Dragon. Grendabold hasn't turned up yet. Luvi went up to a tree to sleep until the morning where the attack would happen. I, meanwhile, found two guards not taking their job seriously. 
One just kind of bored. One sleeping. I give them a warning to wake them up because they could attack at any time. I know attacks can happen at any time because I've spent my life fighting Darkspawn. Despite the warning, I come back later to check on them. The, the one that fell asleep has fallen asleep again. So I basically tell the boat to fuck off. I'll be keeping guard. Dragon, seeing this, comes to help me. Thank God we did, because as we're watching guard, we see a Canary force approaching from that direction. Oh boy. To be able to attack us. If we hadn't replaced them, we would be caught unaware. So I run to raise the alarm, doing so, mustering our forces... Um, then we get battle ready, and the battle begins, and we aren't caught off guard. It's quite equal. Then we accidentally make things worse when Dragon casts a fireball into the forest, attempting to hit the enemy, hits them, but more so hits our troops more. Our line collapses, and our camp catches fire. Oh, God. <sighs> I'm going to leave it up to a dragon. This is when Grendelbold enters the scene. Renderbolt is the Lord's elite bodyguard, his personal bodyguard, the best of the best, one of the smartest people he has. He is far be above and beyond any of our levels. He is the most experienced one. He is basically like, we answered him. He sees uh, one of the Canari, he charges at him, only to take a knock to the head and instantly develop amnesia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, his entire memory of his entire life, all his skills, all his intelligence, gone. And that's when the player takes control of him. His first words were, huh? Oh, get some fight on this guy. Just seeing the guy in front of him. And it, it, it continues attacking him. <laughs> so we, we, we reunite with him. He does not recognize us and doesn't really understand what's going on or anything much at all. And since he's kind of confused and just hitting things at random, we drag him along as we get the hell out of the camp, which has fallen, making our way to the Canary City alone. Grendy see when we explain to Grendy our objective, he's immediately like, oh, let's go get him then, and just tries to run in. We stop him. Dragon, being Canary herself, just goes into the city, kind of acting all casual-like, gets us under disguises of, like, Canary converts from other races, and we head on through them none the wiser, linking up in a tavern. Except for Grendy, who sees a car of pastries and pies and runs after him and vanishes into the crowd. We lose track of him entirely. So, with Grendy nowhere to be seen, and we have no way to go after him without raising suspicion, assuming he's probably going to be dead soon. So we make plans in the tavern. We meet some other survivors, including the sleepy guy who's still falling asleep. I am very unhappy with that. Like, he, he just doesn't give a fuck, though. Uh, we make some plans. It's decided we're going to split into two teams. Dragon is going to go with our NPC survivors to make a distraction in the guard tower while me and Luvi head towards the docks, get aboard a Canary Dreadnought that's going to be carrying converts, the slaves ready to be indoctrinated to serve Canary and the Coon, and rescue all the converts, plus, the, hopefully, the sun. Hmm. From here, we cut to Grendy. Grendy arrives at the guard tower himself, having lost track of the pie cart. Since he's wearing a Canary uniform, he's mistaken for a warrior returning from the battle against us, and him being in his confused amnesiac state believes it's true. Oh no! So he oh, goes, to the, goes into the barracks, hailing the Kuhn wherever he goes, helping out, sorting stuff out, completely, truly believing he's a loyal member, until he's presented, until he enters a presentation where a bunch of our soldiers, who he does remember fighting alongside earlier, are presented as slaves. At which point his only words are, Oh. <laughs> Realize. <laughs> oh. As he's, he suddenly realizes, Oh yeah, <laughs> I was on their side when I... <laughs> so here he is in a room full of Canari, the only dwarf in there, who are all cheering for, the, for like, their heads and enslavement. Just kind of standing there awkwardly and slowly inching out. 
<laughs> oh no. Then, the noise, the... He then decides to sneakily follow the prisoners as they're taken to the dreadnought, still not entirely understanding what's happening, but kind of kind of recalling that he was meant to rescue someone, so he assumes prisoners the rescue go. Uh so he he follows them into a cave that's holding the dreadnought for the night beneath the city, which is like on the coast, by some cliffs. And like hides behind some rocks for a little while just to watch how things are going. So the night falls. Dragon goes to to distraction, but is separated when she is seen, also in a Canary uniform, and questioned. Like, why isn't she in the barracks? Curfew is up, all of that. The NPCs split from her and vanish. Dragon bluffs that she's one of them, was new, got lost, and is escorted back to the guard tower into the barracks and told to rest. With, when they're gone, with the other Canary out sleeping, she sneaks away up to the top floor, finding the diary of the Lord's son, seemingly showing a progression of increasing indoctrination, which isn't good, though we don't know that, only she does. She then reaches the absolute top floor, finds some of the highest-ranking guards there. She falsely claims to one of them that there is a fire downstairs, which turns out to actually be true because the other NPCs have started said fire. And then when he goes to check it out, she follows him and hits around the head and knocks him out. She does. She then goes up to there and says, "Oh God, the co- the the tower show were in here. They have attacked the the previous guard and knocked him out. Come help!" One of the guards follows him out. She hits him behind the head, knocks him out. <laughs> she then tries to go to the third guard in there. Goes in, does it. He's wearing a helmet. <laughs> so it, kind of, it kind of bings. He it doesn't work. He kind of turns around. And he calls out an alarm, results in her just kicking him down the stairs, breaking his neck. <laughs> she runs as more guards come to see what's going on, hides in the room, which turns out to be a classroom full of children. Oh no! Canary children, <laughs> like the teacher of which Not is like babies. <laughs> the teacher of which, like they've been taught the cue news, um, and everything. Like the teacher of which is like, I don't recognise you. When did you come here? Fortunately, she managed, Dragon manages to talk her way out of it, escapes the tower, turns around, casts a fireball at the tower, destroying it and killing everyone inside. Oh, no! That's the oh, babies! That's the God, no! <laughs> oh, fuck. Meanwhile, Grendy jumps in the water and starts swimming towards the Dreadnought. Okay. Uh. While this is happening, Luvi and I are at the back room staring complete bewilderment at everything that's just happened. Because, you know, we want a distraction now, the entire tower is alight, and the fire is spreading to the rest of the city. Very quickly, people are running and screaming and burning to death all around us. Like, we're just staring in shock, like, what the fuck has happened? There was meant to be a small distraction. <laughs> well, you got a big distraction! Now the entire city is burning down. All those children are dead. The... Oh. Like, dragons going around with a bucket wall pretending to help. Or starting more fires. Um, <laughs> like, dragon, despite being Canary, very much hates Canary. Because, uh, like, being a Canary mage means they'll strap you and, like, stitch your mouth shut and, like, you'll be trapped in a cage your entire life. No, she went through that before she escaped. But even though everything's happened, we're like, screw it, we're sticking to the plan. We uh, climb up over the cliff edge, down to the water. We also start swimming towards the Dreadnought. Grendy boards first, being spotted, and tries to divert attention by shouting, Tell the shore on the starboard side! Guess where we are? Oh no. We're on the starboard side. Oh, no. Arrows instantly start flying at us. <laughs> But we're getting shot a lot. I managed to avoid a lot. Like, uh, Grendy gives the guards a slip while this is going on and heads to the hold. Luvi and I scramble up the anchor chain into a hole, also into the hold, where we meet up with Grendy. He then decides to try and divert attention again from himself by shouting, Tell of a sure! and points at us. Drawing the attention of several of the most elite guards on board, four of them. Oh, God. <laughs> they run in. They look. They see us. 
They look at Grendy. They realize Grendy's one of us. Grendy proceeds to run for it. Three of the... <laughs> three of the guards follow Grendy back up to the deck. One of them fighting, staying to fight us. So we engage in combat. We trade initial blows before me and uh, Luby decide, screw it, and we just kind of drop down, get our blazers, both stab them in the crotch at the same time. <laughs> he then tries to run. We then respectively shoot him. Like, well, Luby gets out his bow, shoots him in the back. I can get a throwing axe at him. Both hit him in the back. He goes down dead. We got four minutes left. I'll try and hurry up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grendy, bear in mind, this is the ship with the slaves on it. Grendy grabs a torch, finds a stock of gunpowder barrels, and holds a torch to it. The Canari stop, Grendy threatening to blow the ship up with them and himself if they get too close. Their leader calls his bluff, knowing how the slaves were going to rescue her aboard. Grendabold was not bluffing. Oh, God. <laughs> he drops the torch, and that moment the DM goes silent. Oh. Visibly pale, draw <laughs> drops. Oh. There are several moments oh. of silence. Of, and like the DM physically tried to figure things out in their head of what this happens now. It, it Photoshop in all of the fucking algebraic symbols floating around his head as he tries to <laughs> contemplate what the fuck he's going to do to explain this. The DM asked Randy to throw a saving roll. What the fuck just he happened? Passes. <laughs> so while the explosion goes off, killing all the Canari, Grendy survives, but his arm is that was holding the torch is torn off. He's lost an arm, he's bleeding out. Meanwhile, we're in the hold. We realize the ship's sinking, so we jump right back out of the hole we just came through, back into the ocean and start swimming ashore. Knowing that the slaves, like the ship's just gone, it's breaking apart, it's going down, everyone aboard it is going to be dead. All the slaves gone. The, the dreadnought sinks. While well, Grendy jumps overboard, somehow again rolls an incredibly hard roll, like I had to get like a perfect roll to do this, and does it. Swims ashore, the sight bleeding out with only one arm. The dreadnought sinks. All the crew and the slaves are all killed. Oh. Dragon, meanwhile, finds herself at the docks as civilian ships are trying to flee the doomed city. The fire having just completely spread and destroyed everything. The tired guard, I mentioned earlier, the only one of our NPC allies to survive at this point, the rest are burned to death, comes in and casually mentions he was part of the group at Stardall, still tired, still not giving a shit. All the Canari turn to look at him, and just as he's about to implicate Dragon as well, she knocks him out and proclaims to have captured the Talva show culprit. She drags him with some other guys to the torture chamber and finds the sun, brainwashed and, like, the main torturer. Oh. Dragon attacks at this point, injures one, but is taken down to 4 HP in the fight due to being a mage. She grabs the sun and not, runs away, knocking him out in the process, putting him over her shoulder, and then flees out of the city with seven guards following. We, The rest of us arrive on the beach. Grendy passes out. I have Luby provide medical aid and wake him up, at which point I take my shield and start bashing him in the face of it, shouting... By the divines, you need to remember. Why won't you remember? <laughs> the ensuing head trauma allows his memories to return. <laughs> God fucking <laughs> damn it. Wow. It's words big. Oh, what, ha what happened? You blew up the dreadnought. Huh? Why would I do that? We then us. see Dragon running with the sun over her shoulder. The Canary follow we still in Canary uniforms, then join the Canary chasing her, pretending to be part of them. We trip the first one, leaving six. Luvi and I then toss Grunty ahead. He lands on the Canary leader. They grapple. I engage into combat with two more, while Luvi does the same with the last couple. Dragon escapes into the forest with the sun. Grendy kills the captain by ripping off his own horn and stabbing into the eye with it. Luvi finishes his fight and also enters the forest. I kill one guard before tossing the other at Grendy, who bats him with his warhammer, one-handed killing him like a freaking baseball bat. Hmm. Grendy passes out from blood loss. I drag him by the leg out of the burning city into the forest. We link up, Grendy coming to, and we realize a large forge is ahead of us. This is the final bit. Grendy stays behind as we run. 
coming face to face with the DM's character from their Dragon Age campaign, the Red Ram. Sorry. This session is canon to their main campaign, where Red Ram is one of the player characters. Oh. As they fight, the rest of us flee as the army is chasing us and make it back to the camp. Our forces are since regrouped, covering us as we escape, and we win. Grendy loses his fight to the Red Ram, being impaled after calling the Ram's horse shit and throwing a warhammer into his face. And... Yeah, he, he dead. He, he's been impaled, even though he was completely avoidable, because he could have just run with us. Huh. We were only meant to get in and out with the sun, but instead we destroyed the entire city with fire, destroyed one of the largest Canary dreadnoughts they had, and killed all the people we could have saved barring the sun, with Grendelbaugh making a completely unnecessary sacrifice. This is now part of their main campaign's lore, They'll be making many references to that time a dwarf destroyed a city and a dreadnought, and Grendelbolt has a statue in the like Hall of Legends in like one of the dwarven cities, just holding a canara in one hand, surrounded by fire. Wow. Whoa. Importantly, I... most importantly, though. I got paid. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, on that amazing fucking note, holy shit, it is time for this episode of Jibber Jabber to end. Thank you all so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time. Keep listening, people. Bye. Holy shit. Bye. There I am. Uh, the Everything went wrong.